Hello, 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 and welcome to this edition of A Quick Pint. Now, a chap in just come to my attention that a chap in Japan has spent £18,000 um, uh, in order to achieve his fantasy of living as a wolf. He has had developed for him an ultra-realistic wolf costume so he can live out his fantasy of being a wolf. Now, this might seem utterly bizarre, so I want to uh, make, uh, I want to discuss the way quickly that it is not bizarre at all. You may be familiar with the notion of autogynophilus transsexuality. Uh, this is the idea that, uh, that and Anne Lawrence has looked at this a lot in her uh, her book that certain people are sexually aroused by the idea of being a woman. Now. This is ultimately underpinned by an observation made by Ray Blanchard, which is that for every fetish that exists, there is an inversion of that fetish. So there are people whose sexual fetish is to be sexually aroused by children. There is a minority of those people whose sexual fetish is to be a child, and they are aroused when they think of themselves as a child. Equally, people, well, this isn't a fetish, but are sexually aroused by women, and therefore there is a subsection of those people who are sexually aroused by the idea of being a woman. And Anne Lawrence, in her book, um, Men Trapped in Men's Bodies, talks about how a lot of men who don't transition or anything, they remain men, but they can only um, ejaculate when having sex with their wives by thinking of themselves, by thinking of their wives, by thinking of themselves as being their wives having sex with them. Uh, and there are any number of fetishes that can develop in this way. Now, how they can become bizarre is because fetishes tend to be associated with autistic traits, with autism. Autism, as we have discussed before, is that you are, um, that you are very, very, very uh, easily overwhelmed by stimuli. You're very, very sensitive to stimuli. You, um, you, you, you become very, very stressed very easily. You, you want an ordered and structured world, and you are obsessed with systematizing. And autism is also associated, because it's associated basically with a male brain and with high levels of testosterone, with being hypersexual. So autistics are people that become sexually aroused extremely easily. Uh, and they are um, very, very environmentally sensitive. They're incredibly sensitive to stimuli. Now, what this means is, of course, they can make associations, very strong associations, very easily. For example, they might um, associate a piece of music with a bad event in their life, and they won't be able to listen to that piece of music. That's an obvious example. But they can make even stronger associations, and this includes sexual associations. So something that has some kind of sexual element to it, um, they will be likely um, to, to, to sexualize, to become a aroused by and from there you have um, a fetish and they're also going to be more interested in objects and things because that's what autistics are are interested in objects and things so from there you have the roots of um, of a fetish and so you can imagine it quite quite conceivable that somehow uh, a feeling of I don't know animals feeling nice or something, um, or, or or watching a, an image of a wolf in some context is itself associated with a very very slightly sexual feeling, which wouldn't be sexual to a normal person, but because they're so hypersexual, they feel it as sexual, and then they make the association with let's say a, a wolf, and from there develops the idea that, that they are sexually aroused by wolves. Uh, and from there you have the, the inversion of this idea that they are sexually aroused by the idea of being a wolf. And um, in, just as some people, in order to uh, reach sexual climax, have to imagine themselves as a child or imagine themselves as a woman, um, these people have to imagine themselves as a wolf. And it, because autistics are obsessive, they're obsessed with order and structure, and obsessed with their various interests and so on, then it, they, they live out that fantasy and you end up with people paying £18,000 to have a realistic wolf costume that they can live in. So I hope that has been of interest and goodbye!